Hello and welcome to Tech 18. I am Ahmad Adnan and in this video we are going to discuss all about data science in Fabric. So we are going to cover in depth on each and every topic here. So this is going to be a big video so stay tuned for that. If you are new to this channel or if you haven't subscribed yet just click on the subscribe button and also press the bell icon to get the latest notifications. Now let's get started. So in this lab you will ingest data, explore the data in a notebook process the data with the data wrangler and train two types of models by performing all these steps you will be able to explore the data science features in Microsoft Fabric. By completing this lab you will gain hands-on experience in machine learning and model tracking and learn how to work with notebooks, data wrangler, experiment and models. There are a lot of things which is going to cover on this one. As you can see on this browser I have this multiple tab open up here. So this is one for getting started with the data science. Another thing here is like explore data for data science with notebooks in Microsoft Fabric. This is a detailed video on that. And pre-process the data with data wrangler in Microsoft Fabric. And try and track machine learning models with machine learning flow in ML flow in Microsoft Fabric. Generate batch prediction using deployed model in Microsoft Fabric. So Without wasting further time, let's get started. So I'm now into my Microsoft Fabric environment and here as usual, we need to click here at the bottom of our screen and then click on data science. So once you click on that, then here you will get the home screen where you can create machine learning models, experiment, notebook and environment. So here we need to create a notebook. First of all, you can just click on this one and click on the notebook. As I already created a notebook here, let me click here and open up the notebook onto this workspace. All right. So this is the one and which we are going to discuss about two different models. One is uh, diabetes classification and regression models here. So if you click on this notebook now. By the way, this is the first video which I'm making on specifically for machine learning data science in my entire journey of YouTube. So let me know in the comment section below how this works. I mean how this looks with the way how I teaching the machine learning models here. All right, so as usual, we need to click on the notebook and we create a notebook here. If you want to rename the notebook on the top left, you have the option. You can rename the notebook here. So regularly, which we have seen in the previous videos, like everything will have the left hand side, the lake house and on this part, we will going to have the codes where you can click on note, click on the code or the markdown here. So first of all, what we're doing up here. So each and everything, whatever I'm going to talk about that is actually covered on this lab. I will also add the description of this uh, link in the description of the video. All right, so let me zoom in here. So 150, I think that's a good one. Yeah, so let's zoom in here. All right, data science in Microsoft Fabric, we need to define few of the things where we need to get the data from different sources. So here, what are we are doing up here? We have a Azure storage access, which is the open source access here. And this is from the Microsoft itself, where we have machine learning samples for the diabetes patient here. And this is anonymous access, so we don't have any blob access token here. So usually when you want to access Azure storage, we need to have this kind of parameter. Azure storage blob name and then we need to have a container name and then relate your path for that and also the SAS token. So finally set the spark config to access the blob storage. So we are using the VAS BS path and then we are passing up those information and blob.core.windows.net and blob container name, account name and blob related to path. So this parameter which we already defined here, variables here. So we can talk this as a variable. And then we are using the Spark conf that set and using up the Spark container here. You can get this information on the document link as well. So finally, Spark read parquet. So note that it won't load any data yet by now. So this is the kind of we have a data frame which we already discussed in the previous videos. This is going to just create a data frame for us so that we can get that information from the blob storage inside to this data frame. It's a kind of temporary view. You can see it here. So as we are just starting up this notebook, so this will take a little bit time initially and then it will be much faster in performance. So this is now taking 10 seconds. All right, this is in progress now. It done successfully. So in order to view the information, we can just type here display.codedf, which is data frame. 
and from here we get this information. So far, we learned about how we can get the data from this Azure storage and then load it into a data frame here. So this is information which you are showing up here. We have the patient's age, patient sex here, and then BMI and BP, and then the parameter which we are testing up here, six samples here, and the Y, what we have the result on that. So we need to figure out the Y in this journey. So now the part here comes with the explore data. So how we can explore the data here? So load data into pandas data frame because we are going to use data wrangler for data transformation. So we have seen in the past that we can do some transformations in the notebook itself, like we can add columns, we can update the data and everything. But if you want to do it in the kind of other framework, if you have a pandas data framework, if you want to do that, then you can also use that and that will be mainly useful for data wrangler. So what we need to do, first of all, we need to load the data frame that to pandas and then df.head. So once you run this application, Run this code this is going to load that into a data frame, which will be applicable for the data wrangler for pandas. So here you can see the same information. We have the, all the same, and we also have the numbers on this part. All right. So once we have loaded this into pandas data frame, on the top right you have a data wrangler. You need to click on that. Then this will going to fetch the information if there is available here. Yeah, DF is available, which is actually we ran here. So we need to click on this one. Then this is going to open up in a new tab. So here I just need to zoom out a little bit because to show the full UI here. This is what we can say like we have a power query, the data flows, right? Similar interface we have. We have multiple options here on the left hand side and we have the steps also which is regarded here and we can do any kind of transformation if you want to do it here. We can also do it from here. So now when I click on this Y column, it just gives some information summary on the right hand side. Data type equal to in 64. We have a 442 records and distinct value 214. And if you look into this one, mean standard deviation, minimum 25th median, and 75th percentile is showing up 2011.5. So these are some of the things here. So if you want to add a new formula here, then you can also create here. On the left hand side, we have a formulas option. And here we have option to create column from formula. So once you click on that, we need to define the column name. I would like to give this name as a risk. And then the formula which you need to define here. So I'm just copy paste here. DF is nothing but the view, which is data frame. And then Y is nothing but the column name here. If it is greater than 211.5, which is actually the 75th percentile, then uh, we need to give some conditions here. So if it is greater than Y, then as soon as the integer value it has to apply, then it will give us one on that case. So click on apply here, then it's going to add a new formula, which is on the right hand side. And you can see we have a new column which is added one um, in the risk here. So you can also see we have a more than two 11.5, which is one below to that it's showing up zero value here. So that's one of the formula where we can create here. So once we are done with that one, then we have option here, add code to the notebook. On the left hand side, top left we have. So once you click on that, then this is going to close the data wrangler and then it's going to add that code inside to your notebook. This is the code which has generated here automatically from that option. So code generated by data wrangler for pandas data frame. So df clean data and then data frame created column risk from formula. And this is the one df risk column name equal to y is greater than 211.5 as type integer return data frame. So df clean, clean df and df copy. And then if I click on run this one, this is going to load that into df clean a data frame about the information and now you can see we have a new column added risk on this part. That's cool. So this is what we can do on the data wrangler side. There are a lot of things which can be done and I'm going to add that in the future videos. Let me know which topic you want to cover that in the first part of the data wrangler series. All right, so moving on. So next thing we have here is the explore data. So like this is what we did actually. We have done about the loading into data frame pandas and then we worked on the data wrangler side. And now what we have. So we can also do some kind of statistics here manually. So then we, we have seen about that in the summary of that column, but here also we can use that notebook option. So display the number of rows and columns in the data set. So print and then bracket, double quote, number of rows, colon, double quote, and then day of that shape, and then equal to comma the, the first column, which is showing up here. And day of that shape is equal to one here. So this is referring to this one and now you can see the result which is showing up here. Let me run this one. We can also display the data type of each and every column, print end data types of the column. 
slash n is going to refer a new row on that case and bring the f types here. So number of rows is 442 and number of columns showing up here is 11 and then the data type of the column. So this is the data type of each and every column is showing up here. And finally, the object type is object here. Data type is object here. All right, so let me zoom in again because I'm zooming in and out repeatedly. All right, this looks good. This is run. And also, first of all, we also need to make sure that data validation before we do further process, if there are any null values available inside to our data or not. For that, we can just type here missing underscore values equal to df dot is null dot sum of bracket and then print missing values per column, which is the heading we can type here and print missing value, which is a kind of a data frame, I mean the variables, a temporary view we can create it here. So the each and every column is showing up here and then the missing value, if it is null values there or not. So in this case, there is no null value showing up here. That's good. Yeah, all good here. So if you want to describe this one, I think we discussed the same in the, in the previous video. So df dot describe main is going to give the information about each and every column here and also gives short information here. As you can see it here, that's actually an interesting part here. So the age actually refers to total count is this one, the median standard minimum value is 19 years and the maximum we have 79 year person patients here and percentage is showing up here 59 also here. And also, if you can see the BMI is showing up here is 26, the mean average, and also the minimum is 18 and maximum is 42 here. That's interesting. So, and also we have multiple parameters here. If you want to investigate that, we can also do that. If you look into this BMI here, it's showing up here 26.3. So, generally, the BMI, which is 26.3, is actually the overweight comes category. So, those who are overweight, they have a diabetes in general. That's what I can see based on the data which we have here. All right, so moving on, we can also calculate some of the information here. We can also do a kind of charts, which we also covered previously, but for this specific case, we can also explore that using a chart here. So we need to import the libraries here, matplotlib.pyplot, and then we can also use cburn and numpy here, and we are going to calculate the mean, median, or BMI variables. So mean in the different variable, which is df.bmi, the variable name, the temporary view, and then the column name here, dot mean, and then dot median is going to calculate that inside to a variable. And after that, we need to use the historiogram of the BMI variable here. So this could refer to the chart, which is going to represent the bottom of the screen. And we need to have a different, different types here. So what is the color of that? And what is the edge color of that? Everything which is showing up here. And now which is showing the result, which is coming up here is this one. So BMI distribution mean is on the red one, median is on the green one. And then average, which is showing up here, the frequency and BMI on the x-axis, which is showing up here on this part. Yeah, like I said, the BMI mostly falls in the higher side of that. So that's the reason they have a diabetics here. And as you can see the graph, which is showing up the higher, the BMI, we have this number of patients here. So let's do another one, which is a math plot clip. Again, I'm going to use that, but here this time we are going to use the scatter plot of BMI versus target variable here. Yeah, now we can see we have a BMI versus target variable showing up the information here. So here in the scatter plotter chart, we are actually comparing the BMI column and the Y column, which is the target column, and from this view of the data frame here. So as you can see, we have this information the higher the BMI, it goes to higher the target also is showing up here. The lower the BMI and the lower the target and higher the BMI, it goes to higher the target of that. So moving on to the next analysis here. So here replace the numeric values with the labels, which is sex equal to sex that replace one equal to male and two equal to female. Because in the data which we have, we have one or two. So we are just specifying male and female here. So we can also use here a box plot chart where we are used here again, the same thing. So we are using X axis as a gender and also the Y axis for the BP and data from this one and loading up the information here on this one. Where you can see the male and female we have the higher the BP in the female category when compared to the male one. And also the average is showing up here almost 90 plus for the female one and average 90 for the male candidate here. Similarly, we have a multiple graph option where you can play around what is the age of that and what is the BMI for each and every person like male and female. Average is 98, age 98 BP for them and 91 for male and 26.79 BMI for females and 26.01 for the male here. 
And another one which we have it here is showing the age and this is the BMI here. So this actually increased the BMI and as the person increased the age as well. So that's the reason showing up here, the grass goes up and also on the right hand side you can see we have a age 80 and the BMI goes up for that category. This is an interesting analysis that we can do with the help of notebook with the help of very single line of codes here. All right, so if you want to also do the correlation between these things, then also we can use that. So data frame that correlation numeric, numeric only equal to type and you can see the graph which is showing up here at the bottom here. So we are not able to understand this clearly because of the color highlighting here. But if you want to do that, then you can also use this small heat map option where you can run this one and we'll get the information about that. So if you want to look into this depth in detail here, you can see the S1 and S2 actually has a positive impact. So wherever we have an increase in S1, it's also the same thing on the S2 here. So as S1 is decreased, we also have a decrease in S2 here. Similarly, the parameter between S3 and S4 has a negative impact. If there is a positive on the S4, there is a negative on the S3 side here. So that's what we can able to see the information here. So this will be helpful for the field people, those who are working on that to analyze in depth about how these things can be done. So, so far we have seen how we can get the data inside to a notebook into data frame and then how little bit we can do the things in data wrangler and also we can use the multiple charts option within the notebook itself. And now we are going to use the option about how we can train a model. So here is the code where we can do from split land, SQL land model selection, import train test split. So here we need to pass an X and Y for that. So X is refers to these are the labels and Y refers to the one which we want to predict on that. So Y is the one which we want to calculate. And finally, we need to pass this one, uh, the train test, train everything. So once you do so, if you run this one, then it's going to create a new ML flow in our data model. And after that, we need to also use few codes here, which is import ML flow. Experiment name, we are giving the name here, diabetes regression, and ML flow that set experiment to the experiment name. So once you run on this one, this is going to create a new model for you, and you can go back to the workspace. If I click here, and here you can see it has created a two different models, which we have added here. So one is a diabetic regression here, and another is diabetic classification here. So when you click on this experiment here, as you can see the type is showing up your experiment. So if I open up this one, diabetic regression, so let's see what it actually gives the information. So, so far it has run this many times. It has given each and every run a separate name. And also you can see the information about each and every runs here. So the run duration, the run name, and also the status and ID from where it has done explore other information. And if I scroll down to this one, it gives them much more information about that. And it has also given the score for each and every run here. So training score is 73% here, the accuracy of the model, uh, accuracy of the experiment, and also it has also given much more information. So if I click on this one, we can also run multiple times and so that can refer into which target we need and which score is good on that. So here you can see the training score is only 0.55. And if I click on the other one, it's 73 one. If I click on this one, 55. And if I click on the first one, it is showing up 55. So the recent one showing up here 73. If you're okay with this one, then you can click on the save as ML model on this one. I click here and then give it a name here. So let's say I would like to give the new name here. So create a new machine learning model, select a folder. So this has to be model and just give it your name here. So I like to give this name here 2024061 and click on create. This will helpful, right? So we can create a course and train the model. Multiple times we can run the experiment and then uh, with the help of a notebook and then you can monitor here the result of that experiment finally once the model work we have like the run so we can save that as machine learning models here if i go back to the workspace now i should see the one which i created here it is not available here because i have the created folders some of the things is not supported yet so if i go to the outside of the folder i should see this one which is created here machine learning model this is no more an experiment this is a machine learning model here so select this one, let's move on to the folder which I need, which is the 12th folder. Getting started with machine learning models, that's cool. So let's go into that folder again. So now we have this machine learning model for today's day. So if I open up this model here, let's see what it actually provides the information. 
yeah so this is going to be the same thing when and where it has created here and this has given other required files on this particular part all right so what is the next thing so we are here using the diabetic regression model and similarly we can also create multiple other models as well they like linear regression which actually stops here you can pause and look into the video here or also you can refer to the document from microsoft and then what is going to happen? we have also a decision tree so we can also have the estimator on that so based on these three decision tree regression models where we want to experiment multiple things and which which is applicable for us which has a higher accuracy score for us which model this experiment we can take that as machine learning model for further uh, refinement on that so now the next part is the final one where we are going to test it out some data with the help of the machine learning model what we developed and to, and we'll see what is the actual outcome comes from that so for that we need to create on this notebook here and then we need to open the explorer view so that we can add a lake house inside to that as the screen was zoomed in i was not able to look into that so i need to click on expand here i can click on the lake house here. I can use existing lake house or I can create my own lake house here. So I'm going to create a new lake house. So add a lake house here. It has to be a new lake house. Click on add. So let's give it a name here data science lake house 01 and click on create. Before changing the default lake house, you need to stop the current notebook session and continue. Yeah, because we are going to add a new notebook for this connection. So that's why it is going to stop the existing run of the notebook and then it, we need to start it again. So in the meantime, it is adding up the lake house on the left hand side here. All right, in order to load the data inside to this lake house, we'll just going to create a new code here. So this I just copied it from that. So let me check if we have any space at the beginning. Everything is looks good. So we need to run this one. So this is going to load some dummy data here. So let me add zoom in here. And it's also the same structure which we have age, gender, and then BMI, BP, S1, S2, S3. We need to find here the Y of these patients, of these records here. So it is now convert the data type to match the model input schema, which is referring to this one, DFW with column name. And finally, we need to save the information here. It is not yet started, I just ran now. All right, seven jobs success successfully. So on the left hand side, we have a table. If I click on refresh, I should see one table. Yeah, diabetes test here. So this is the done. So if you want to look into what is the column inside to this one, just drag and drop onto this canvas. This is going to add a code and then you can run here. So make sure that you are limited to certain rows if you are checking up the data quality, data structure on that. Right now, this is the less data, so it is okay to run entire thing. But in generally, we should have to keep the top 10 or top 100 for that. Yeah, now we have the information. Let me minimize this here. I think this is the only visible if we have the percentage to be 100. Yeah, the arrow is missing up here. All right, so let's click here and then zoom in again. Okay, so if you look into the structure, it's actually the same thing. We have the age, gender, BMI, BB, and average. Why is missing? So we need to answer the why in that case. That's the machine learning model which we are going to use that. So now let's add a new code here in order to run this a new machine learning model code here. So I just use the code here, machine import ML flow, which is predict here ML flow transformer. These are the libraries which we need to import. And here we have the lake host table, which is the table name here. So do you have spark that read table format delta dot node tables and table name if you have the table name then you can mention directly on this particular part so we need to mention the model name also here um, in order to work on that so model name here it has taken diabetes model but if you have any other model you can also mention on that so first of all we need to click on run and what is doing up here it's going to read the patient feature data which is available on our lake house data table and this is the table and table name and also it's good, good and also it's going to store that information into a data frame and using that data frame, passing that information into a machine learning model where we're going to define this one X axis and predictions and also about their machine learning model name. So we need to define all these things and finally save the result of the original feature plus the prediction. So we have the right, the right format delta mode override option, let schema true and then the table name on that one. 
So if I expand this one, this job has run successfully. It succeeded here. If I expand this one and refresh this one here, so copy on this one, click on refresh. So I scroll down. Yeah, I have a new column which is prediction here. So let's drag and drop this table into this area which is loading up here. And if I run on this one, select from this table, limit thousand. I should see a new column added here, which is the prediction here. That's actually the Y column which we have it on our test model. So now you understood about right. So we are referring that while creating and experimenting these things. Uh, let me show you that. So here we have this many information, and here we have the predictions of that. So they have a diabetes of 143.76 based on the sampling which we have it, and for each and every patient here. That's beautiful how we can analyze that. So now just for a quick recap, if I go back to the previous stages where we have created a model here, we are defined this one regression models and other stuff. And also we are defined the X and Y axis onto that one. So here we have defined the X axis using the CCLAN. We have defined the labels, which is a common names, uh, column name. And here we have a Y values here. So this is the one which we added onto that calculation in the machine learning model so that we can run on that particular part. So we'll dig deeper much more inside to that. If you have any further questions, let me know in that video so that we can also cover that in future videos here. So this is my first video, like I said, on the data science part. I really enjoyed making this video here. So please let me know, in, please, please let me know your comments in the comment section below. If you like this video, just hit the big thumbs up button. If you're new to this channel or if you haven't subscribed yet, just click on the subscribe button and also press the bell icon to get the latest notifications. But make sure you turn on the notification on your devices. Share it with your friends and colleagues. If you have any queries and feedback, let me know in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Keep learning. See you in the next video.